Hi, Michael here, and in this video journal I'll start gluing on the kerfing between the side reinforcement braces. Uh, we'll make and install the arm bevel block and then final radius both the back and the top. Keep watching! I've got the back radius to its 15 foot radius and of course my side reinforcement braces are glued on. And now I want to go ahead and start cutting my kerfing to fit in between. And mark where I need to trim it to. There's one piece. gluing on the kerfing. I've gotten all my kerfing cut to fit in between and I'm just to start gluing them on little sections. Main thing to be concerned with here is to make sure that I get the, the kerfing flush with the sides. And then do a little glue squeeze up, clean up. Okay, I'll let all that dry. The ones that I glued and clamped, and then I'll come back and do these three little sections in between. Just make sure I've got the second series of kerfing glued on. Side brace kerfing caps. Okay, I've taken uh, just a little cut off strip of my kerfing and cut some little pieces and then taken the little pieces and trimmed them so that they're flush on both sides. And then I've got two pieces of my side reinforcement braces over here, just kind of lined up. And I'm just going to mark where they come up to on these little pieces. Because I want to cut this part away so I can glue the top onto my side reinforcement braces. And I've made just a little stop here on this little miter box type device. And I, so that it comes to the proper depth. I guess I really didn't have to mark them, but... Uh, and I'm just going to saw a bunch of these up. These are the side reinforcement braces where they come through the kerfing. And I've got that little gap right there. Uh, and I'm just going to cut these little pieces so that they'll fit in. Radiusing the kerfing smooth to the sides. Okay, I've gotten all the kerfing glued on the back all the way around. Now all I've got to do is do the final radiusing of the back. I'll chalk this up a little bit all the way around. And that will let me know where I'm missing a 
the spot. I've got a little low spot right there. All righty. Back to the sanding. And just a few little more spots. Need some work. Now that I've gotten the back um, radius to its 15 foot radius and all of the kerfing on, it's time to turn it over and swap over to the 30 foot radius, which is for the top. I have repositioned the body. This is the back. And I'm just going to set it here on the dish and chalk it up the top. Now it shouldn't take as long uh, radiusing the top because it's only a 30 foot radius rather than the 15 like the back. So now it's going to go ahead and turn this over. Once again we're radiusing the top, not the back. Yeah. Alright, check and see. We've gotten the tail block um, already down. The heel block it's still got a little ways to go. And we've got some on that far side. So we'll just Continue on. Okay, I've gotten all of my chalk marks off. So we have the top now radiused. And it's time now to start putting the kerfing on the top. Gluing on the top kerfing. After drying overnight, the arm bevel block. Now that I've gotten all the kerfing on the uh, guitar body, top and the back, with the exception of the portion where the arm bevel is going to be, before I radius the kerfing on the top and smooth it all out, I need to go ahead and, and cut the arm bevel block and get it ready to glue on. So. This is a piece of basswood. It's about one and a sixteenth inch thick. And I need to span the distance from here to here. And trace this side here. There's the side traced on the block of basswood. So the arm bevel block is one and an eighth inch wide in the center and will taper to the thickness of the kerfing at the ends, which in this case is a quarter inch. All right, so this is my little template. I can just kind of use it to figure out about how far need to go so somewhere to here into here so that's pretty close and kind of connect these lines and down to about a quarter of an inch take this over the bandsaw and cut that off and we'll go from there Okay, here's my arm bevel block. It's just rough cut out now. I just need to fit it to the sides. So it's going to go about there. So here's my pencil line that I uh, scribed on there when I first marked it off. I'm just going to take this over to the drum sander and see if I can clean that line up a little bit.
the arm bevel block fit check. Okay, I've gotten my arm bevel block sanded smooth to its profile on both sides. I've got it a quarter inch at the end so it line up with my kerfing, but I'm not gonna glue it on now. The next thing I need to do is to go ahead and cut out this section of the side where the arm bevel is going to be. Cutting the side for the arm bevel. Alrighty then. Cut my coping saw with a fairly fine tooth blade on there. And So I've got that little section rough cut out. trimming the block to fit the kerfing. Okay, I spent a little time sanding and fitting the arm bevel block, and I've trimmed the ends of it down to a quarter inch, so when they meet the kerfing, they'll be the same level. And I've drawn a line where the um, arm bevel block meets the sides where I've trimmed it. And we can look at that line and see that this is going to be my glue area through here. And this arm bevel block will taper. It'll be cut from here to about up in here to create that bevel. But I really don't need all this wood on either side. So I'm just going to take some of that off. I might even be able to use this little flexible ruler. Okay, I'm just going to take a little hand plane. Nearly both sides. And there's our arm bevel block. Gluing the block to the sides. All right, I've got my arm bevel block tapered, sanded, and fitted. Now it's just time to glue it on. And we'll just put some glue on there and glue it up. All righty then. Just gonna press and hold for a second or two. Let that glue start to grab, make sure I'm flush on both ends. And then just put light clamping pressure on both sides, make sure I'm even here. If anything, I'd rather be a little proud than a little short there on those. Okay, and I'm gonna have some glue squeeze out. Get that out of there. block has been clamped on overnight so it's time to go ahead and take the clamps off.
Okay, almost done with this set of sides. For the next step though, however, I do need to go ahead and glue on the last of the kerfing and my last two side reinforcement braces. Okay, time to cut and glue on the last little bit of kerfing. So we'll just cut this one right here. Alrighty. Now we'll go ahead and glue that in. carving the block on the inside. Okay, before I start taking some of this excess off the horn bevel block, I'm just gonna protect my sides a little bit with this piece of plastic. All right. sanded down and profile. Last two side braces. Okay, these are dry. So go ahead and take these clamps off. Okay, the last thing I need to do is to put my little side reinforcement uh, braces here, they're little caps. So when these dry, I'll be able to just touch this up on the 15 foot radius on the back and then I'll radius the top again to this 30 foot radius uh, just to clean up all the kerfing and, and the arm bevel block to make sure everything's flush. Okay, I've gotten the arm bevel block on and I've gotten the kerfing glued on the uh, top and the last two side reinforcement braces are on. So now it's time to uh, radius and level out the kerfing that uh, are glued onto the top. So to do that, I've got it back on my 30 foot radius dish and I need to go ahead and put the spreader back in. And go ahead and chalk up the top. down. Okay, I've got it all the kerfing leveled and top and bottom. Now I can go ahead and just take my spreader all the way out. Well, that's it for this video journal. I hope you've enjoyed it. Next time I'll start working on the bottom center stripe and then the sound port. Thanks so much for watching.